I am Tyco, and I'm here with my friend, Nick. Nick. And we're here to show you how to play First Blood 2.0. In First Blood, each player commands an army of fantasy miniatures fighting in fun, fast skirmish action. I am pretty new at the whole skirmish scene for First Blood, right. but I'm getting hooked. This is a really fun game that takes only a couple of hours to settle a score between your favorite factions from Parabellum's World of Ea. Nords, Hundred Kingdoms, Dwegholm, Spires, Wadroon, and the Old Dominion vie to dominate Ea and rule by right of conquest. Parabellum has really hit it out of the park with straightforward rules that are easy to understand, but difficult to master. And as usual, all the rules and a handy army builder are available for free on their website. The makers of Conquest really go the extra mile to bring the community they serve the best in new models, events, rules updates, painting contests, and so much more. Check out their Discord and Facebook groups to get in contact with people who are playing Conquest in your community and around the world. Join the Conquest. To play First Blood, first you're gonna need a table. We also need some terrain. We need some standard six-sided dice and a measuring tape. I'm Something sorry. to measure with. Something in <laughs> Imperial inches. And lastly, you need an army of fantastic Parabellum miniatures to fight with. Ha! Armies of Parabellum miniatures. Perfect. It looks like I've got the Hundred Kingdoms here. Yep, and I'm playing the Nords. I don't like the Nords. The Nords are great. They beat me all the time. Rated by some models? Use our affiliate link and get 10% off while also supporting our channel and Conquest First Blood. Get involved with this amazing, growing community. Smash that hit button. Link that link. Like that video. Like it. Like, like it. Like it. You. <laughs> so let's dive in and see what you need to know to play First Blood. Regiments are the separate parts of your army. Command cards represent each regiment in your army and have a QR code that you can scan to get the rules for the regiment right on your phone through the Parabellum website. Regiments have characteristic profiles in their army lists. The profile details the name, weight class, and type. Infantry, cavalry, brute, or monster. Points are used in army building and describe how much the regiment costs to include in your army. Below are the statistics. March determines how far you can move during a march action. Volley tells how accurate the model is at shooting things. Clash, for how adept the unit is at hitting things in melee. Attacks tell us how many dice to roll when the model hits things in melee. Wounds show how much damage a unit can sustain before being removed. Resolve measures the model's courage. Defense measures resistance to damage. And finally, evasion represents any abilities that avoid damage, like magic or dodging. Special rules are other abilities that the regiment has that allow it to do various things. Archers, for instance, have the barrage special rule that allows them to do volley actions, i.e. to shoot an enemy model. The shield special rule adds one to the defense stack and blocks enemies from attacking through the model that has the shield. There are many special rules described in detail in the online rule book. In the army builder, you can just click or hover over special rules and get all the details. Draw events are special rules that happen when a regiment's command card gets drawn for activation. Once you have picked your character and the other regiments that will make up your army, up to the agreed upon points value, you are ready to pick a scenario to play. Today, my Nords will be taking on Nick's Soldiers of the Hundred Kingdom. Enforcers of Imperial Justice. And taxes. We're gonna steal the taxes and give them to ourselves. Barbarous. Indeed. In this clash of about 800-ish points, Scenario one will do nicely and has three objective zones. The big objective zone in the middle represents the loot and the other objective escape routes. We'll deploy within 10 inches of the map edge and we roll off to see who deploys the first unit. To score points, we will need to hold the center objective for two points and keep the enemy from sneaking around and cutting us off by stealing the rear objectives for three points for a successful hold. Winning takes 10 victory points or more points than the foe at the end of eight battle rounds. Low Roller gets to choose who places the first regiment, then we alternate till all the units are down. In First Blood 2.0, units start on the map, unless they have special rules that allow them to be put in reserves, like flank. Hua! Ooh, looks like it's your choice. Ooh, I got the lowest roll, That's I get right. to choose? That's right. Let's see you deploy the first unit. I wanna see where you go. Fair enough. Well, I'm gonna start with Raiders. They wanna go right up, and do Raider things. I need to deploy them within command distance of my leader, which is five inches, 
aggressively place my first gaggle of raiders. All right, while you're putting raiders down, I'm gonna put my first unit, I'm gonna put some crossbowmen. So if you're gonna get aggressive, I'm gonna shoot you in the face. That makes sense. Maybe the chest. Ooh, possibly even the knee. Ooh, arrow in the knee sounds thematic. Perfectly done. Hmm, good placement. I think that my next unit will be more raiders. Perfect, more targets for my bows. Pretty much gonna join their friends. There they go. All right, some men at arms protecting the church. Oh, and then you got some house carls there. And then I've got the pikes that go behind these men at arms. And they're gonna be a nice ordered ranks back here. Some stalkers. Next unit of men at arms are gonna hold the well. Oh, my fettier beast here has the flank special rule. Ooh. And I am not going to set him up on the battlefield. He's actually going to be coming on in a subsequent turn. Can he come in from the sides He's and try to eat me? sneak around the sides and do exactly that. Oh, excellent. And then I've got my leader, oh. the Imperial Officer. Imperial Officer, getting a drink. My blooded. You will not breach this line today, barbarians. On the lines, let none of them through. Looking good. And it looks like we are ready for battle. The game has five phases. The reinforcement phase, the command phase, the supremacy phase, the action phase, and the victory phase. Oh, that's a good phase. The game begins with the first phase, the reinforcement step, but as models are not allowed to enter the game from reinforcements first round, we can move on to the command phase right away. My fit air will have an opportunity to join the battle in round two. Ooh. The command phase is where you secretly decide the order that your regiments activate for the round by stacking the command cards representing your active regiments and characters face down, making a stack. The card on top will activate first. Some of the strategy of the game lies in predicting the best order for your units to activate in. All right, your command stack, you ready to go? Yes. Let's see if my plan survives contact with the enemy. Sometimes the best plans can go awry. Now we will go on to the supremacy phase to see who goes first. All right, here we go. Oh, oh, oh you got a three, I, I got, got a four. Lois. So you go first. Excellent. Well, the action phase now begins, and you start the action phase by drawing the first card in your command stack. Oh, oh, what is it? What is it? It is the men at arms. The men at arms. Men at arms. I have two units of men at arms. I can choose which one I activate. That's right. When activated, my men at arms can perform up to two actions. There are out of combat actions and in combat actions. Out of combat actions are march and charge, rally, take aim, and volley things that you do when you're not physically fighting the enemy. In combat actions are clash, inspire, combat rally, combat reform, and disengage, things you do while in melee with your foes. You get to pick two actions to perform each round, and the only one that you can pick twice is the march action. Since we're not in combat yet, I will pick the out of combat action march, allowing me to move the models in my regiment up to their lowest march value in inches starting with the leader. My leader has a command range of five, so the men-at-arms need to stay within five inches of him. March is also the only action you can perform more than once in the same activation, so I'm gonna do it again to get them within striking distance of the center objective. With that, my unit deactivates and the play passes to Tycho. My turn. So my first activation, I draw off the top of my command stack, it's gonna be a unit of raiders. Sir. And I want them to go really fast. Really fast. Really fast. Hmm, you have crossbows, don't you? Well, I have lots of raiders. I'm gonna have to brave their fire to make my maneuver. I have a special army rule called reckless attack. I can gain bonuses by sacrificing my models. I am taking one casualty marker that will give them plus two to their movement characteristic. Go raiders, go. They are going to double march, but are now moving seven inches for each march action, dashing up to snag the big center objective zone. They are done with their actions now, so I lose one model for their reckless attack casualty marker. He overexerted himself running for the center objective. His heart just went kablooey. Within leadership range of my blood. Oh, what does that do? Well, you'll find out, won't you? Well, guess what's next? What's next? The mercenary crossbowman. The mercenary crossbowman. I started a bit farther back, but I think because you moved up, I'm now gonna be able to get in range. So I'm gonna do one march action and then shoot at those raiders move up and actually hide behind this fence and shoot you with quarrels. 
<laughs> Looks like only three models are within my 15 inch range, so I will get three shots. The Raiders are obscured by terrain, so my volley characteristics is lowered from two down to one. All right, so I'm gonna fire those crossbowmen at those Raiders. Oh, and I got one success. One success. The other Look two fail. That. Low dice is good. Right, so you have hit my Raider. Yes, and now you get to make a defensive roll. However, I have armor piercing on my weapons, which oh. means I'm gonna reduce your armor save by one. My one defense stat is pierced. Luckily, I also have an evasion. Dodging Raiders! I rolled a four. So unfortunately, that's too high. My Raider was not dodgy enough. An incoming crossbow bolt wings him in the knee, takes a wound. But luckily, Raiders have two wounds. Oh, so, so it doesn't kill him. He's not quite dead yet. He is a wounded Raider. Other Raiders hear his cry and are gonna come marching to his aid. <laughs> <laughs> Raiders here will perform a double march action and get up and help their friends. They are not going to reckless attack though. With that, they deactivate and it moves to your go. Well, next I have the Menatons. My other men at arms right here ah, are gonna yes. now activate. Gonna use two march actions to move up the field. Jump, jump, jump. Your men at arms have moved up. I've got my blooded next. Oh, that's your warlord. Yes, the leader character. Character regiments and regiments with officers have command abilities listed in their special rules that can be used on units within their command range after any draw events, but before the regiment activates. So my blooded is going next. He is a fierce warrior, but he also has the command ability feral regeneration. I'm gonna use my command ability. Yeah, just in range. Is going to be able to heal three wounds. Oh, so the wound that you just did and that I did is gonna come back. My dead warrior from the Reckless Assault take up two wounds of that healing and he'll just come back completely fresh and fancy free. And then the one wound I managed to do in the knee, it just magically heals himself. That's right. Regenerating Raiders, I need to kill that unit quick. Hey, hey. After he does his command ability, he is going to use both of his march actions to get up and join those Raiders, but not too far. He doesn't wanna- He doesn't wanna, wanna get, get some more- Charged or anything. He doesn't so wanna get hit by arrows. But he can kind of run in there and take part in the assault on that objective. Well, stay together, boys. My next unit activates, and it is the Household God. So I'm gonna use two of my actions to march up again and hold the line. March, 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 march. These units work perfectly with the men-at-arms. They've got long poles. They can fight a longer range away. But in addition, the men-at-arms have shields, allowing the Household Guard to be safe behind. So you're gonna stay in formation. Stay in formation, boys. Your turn, what are you gonna activate next? My? House Carls. They want to get up there and make sure that this assault goes nicely too, so they're going to double march, stay with their friends. March up the field. All right, so next to activate is actually my, the other household guard. So they're gonna move up as well to support, making it so that you're gonna have a hard time getting through my line. My next activation are more raiders. The last unit of raiders go right. down. They're going to double march as well and Come up and make sure that you have problems on this side. All right, your go. All right, so I've only got one card left and it's actually the Imperial Officer. Oh, the officer. He has very little to do at this moment, but he wants to make sure that his troops keep marching in ordered lines. So we're just gonna move up to keep up with his troops. And finally, the Stalkers. Now well, they're stalkers. way over there. Way down way there in downtown. There. And I think that they want to pull some shenanigans. Oh, what is their shenanigans? Reckless attack. They are going to be able to move a uh, big eight inches for each of their march actions. Ooh. I'm gonna try and scoot all the way around the outside. You're gonna try to take that objective away from my uh, oh, crossman, aren't you? Yes. Unfortunately, at the end of their activation, they lose one of their number to their exertions. That does put them in striking distance of that objective. So now we go to the victory phase. Yes, I like this phase. You score points, right? In the victory phase, I'm gonna score two points because I'm within six inches of the center of this objective here. And I am not. That's right. My light units can score this objective, but they only count for half the amount of models on the objective than regular infantry. Luckily, I have more than two. Excellent, so what I need to do is get this big unit of strong guys on the objective and hold it. So the current score is two for you and zero for me. That's right. But lastly, at the end of the phase, all orders go away. The casualty tokens go away and we start fresh. And so that, I believe, is the end of the turn.
Then we go to round two and we get to make our command deck all over again. Well, there's a reinforcement stage and that means that my Fenier gets to join the fray. So I'm gonna take his command card and add it to my command stack as I build my deck oh, this round. Okay, so let's build our deck and see what happens. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we roll for supremacy. Supremacy. It's actually a tie, which normally would mean we would re-roll. However, because your addition of your little reinforcement there, I now have fewer command cards than you do, which means I get to modify this dice roll up or down at my leisure. Oh. So I will say I'm gonna go first. Oh, I see. Because look at his cards first. So your Imperial Officer is your first go. My Imperial Officer is gonna go first. Two command abilities. Actually, he has three command abilities, but he only can use two of them. He can use two of them. He's gonna use two of them right now. He can issue two commands, so he's gonna order those men at arms to hold their ground, which will double their effectiveness at holding objectives, and he will order those household guards to press the advance which allows them to re-roll their hit rolls. After his command abilities, he'll now do his two actions. For his first action, he'll move forward a bit, but not too much, he does not want to get charged. Then he'll pass on his last action. Over to you, sir. All right, so my first activation, stalkers. So those are those archers way in the corner that are threatening my home objective. That's right. I think I want to go and get in there and get that objective from you. I'm gonna move them first and then do a charge as my second action. So. Off they go. They get to move six inches. Oh, so you won't be able to fight with them. I won't be able to get you a class run into me. out of it. I will be able to run into you, but it does make us in engagement range and makes it so that I get to where I want to be. It also means that I won't be able to shoot my bows later. That's a good point. I'm going to declare a charge on your crossbow. To charge, I roll one die six and add it to my movement characteristic. This will be how far they can go for their charge. So I'm hoping for a low roll. That's right. I rolled a four. To add that to six, which is my movements to characteristic. You're in there. 10 inches should get me in there, no problem at all. Testing you for the objective. Now, because I've used both my actions already, I cannot actually fight. Yeah. All right, well, my next activation is the Men at Arms. Men at Arms. Their seasoned veteran officer will command them to lock shields, and they're gonna march right up and charge you. I'm too far away to charge you with my first action, so I won't be able to clash after my charge. I need to measure the distance from my leader of the unit to any model in my target unit and make sure there's line of sight. Just over seven inches in this case. I will add my march characteristics of five to the roll of a D6, and if the total is eight or higher, I will successfully charge. Great, my charge has succeeded. And yeah, he needed a two to make the charge here, but you rolled a six. Move my leader by the shortest possible route, ending with an engagement range of his target. The rest of the regiment follows by moving the charge distance. Friendly models in a charging unit do not block each other from seeing and moving during a charge. I didn't get to fight because I marched and charged using a, both of my actions. But you've locked shields, so hopefully you'll be able to survive there on the objective yeah. while your pikemen march up. So what's going on next for you? I've got raiders. More raiders. Uh -huh. Who'da thunk it? These raiders right here have seen their friends being charged by these dastardly men at arms. I might be dastardly, but you are smelly. <laughs> you know what? The only good raider is a smelly raider. <laughs> These ra raiders here need to get just over seven inches, so that's gonna be an eight inch charge. So I need to get a three or higher on this D6 to make the charge. Let's see it, fail. Low rolls. Oh, yes. I rolled a two. So I fail my charge. Now that uses up their first action and they cannot charge again. So unfortunately- You can't do the same action twice. That's right, unless it's a march action. So for their second action, they are going to just do a march. Hopefully, so they won't fail a charge next round. Makes sense, makes sense. All right, so my turn next Ooh. is the Household God. The household God! I'm gonna choose this squad right here. They're gonna actually double march up because they wanna go support and help out that squad. So my next go are more raiders. More raiders. I've got a unit that's already kind of locked in combat here. You do. So what I'm going to do is a inspire action which is gonna make them fight a little better. And for their second action, it's gonna be a clash action, which will let me to bash you over the head of all my axes. In First Blood, when you declare a clash action, you can move models closer to enemy models that, that the unit is already engaged with up to three inches. To basically Just to make sure all of them get in as close as they can. That's right. So basically these guys are going to, it's this unit here. And now all of them are in range to be able to fight. So it looks like the whole unit has gotten into an engagement range. So that's gonna be a lot of attacks. It is gonna be a lot of attacks. One attack each, and the leader has an extra attack. I'm gonna roll seven dice to represent the models in my unit attacking. I need to get a 
three or less because my clash statistic is normally two. I inspired. Plus one to hit. And I have flurry, which allows me to reroll my misses. That's fantastic. So here come my seven attacks. Uh, I actually rolled really, really well there. That's it. exceptionally well. Only two misses. Only two misses. And you get to re-roll those because of flurry. I get to re-roll them because of flurry. They don't hit. So that's five hits. Now, you have a defense of two. You have shields which bring you to three, but you've interlocked them. So you're going to be saving these on four or less. So I take one dice for every hit that got through and try to stop it with my shields. Right. See if I can get it. Wow, look at oh, that. I saved them all. No damage at all for my whole unit of raiders wailing away. Your interlocked shields held strong. I managed to defend them all, so now I get to go next. And my next unit is actually the crossbowmen. Crossbowmen, oh, way over there. Way over there. Oh, they've, they've got some stalker problems. Yeah, they do. So they need to be brave, brave. hold in there, yeah. pull out their swords, oh. and stab ya. Okay, so uh, you have four models. Four dice. Not one more, because you have a leader. Exactly. Five dice. <laughs> now their clash statistic is only one, but you are going to, I think. My first action will be to inspire. There you go. So I get to inspire, get plus one to my clash. Well, so I will be hitting on twos or less. And I have two hits on you. Whoa. That's actually really good. You now roll defensive dice for those two hits. And what do you got to get? I got one, two, one, four. I only have a defensive one, but. I have an evasion of two. Oh. So the two comes up big, and I managed to dodge one of those. But one goes through. And do you have more than one wound on those guys? I do. Those guys have two wounds apiece. <sighs> so one of them takes one wound. One wound. Now, there is something that also happens when I take wounds in melee. You have to also see if that affects your morale. Oh, so guys could possibly run away. That's right. And that is represented by losing additional wounds. Right. My guy's been drop kicked by your, your crossbowman, and he's a little upset about it. We'll see if it's upset about it enough that he has to take his bloody nose and, yeah. and go up. So for every wound, you now have to roll one more dice to see if that ends up being a morale failure or not. So Stalker has a resolve value of two, which means you need a two or less to make him not run away. That's right. And I rolled a three. So that so. stalker that took the wound is now gonna run away. That's right, he failed his morale and is going to flee. Flee, little stalker. So he run takes away. one wound of morale damage, but that's enough to kill him. Yay! Casualty token, in case I'm able to heal that unit in some way later in this round. I couldn't take the morale damage on a different model. You have to put damage onto damage models until those models are removed. No spreading out the wounds among uh, multi-wound models. Goes to your turn now. My next activation, my blooded. Ooh, the blooded. That's your leader of your army. Indeed. Scary blooded. He is gonna declare a charge. Makes sense. First action, that's four, plus his movement five. He'll have to be more than enough, because he just needs to get over to here to start whacking away at your men at arms. When you charge, you actually get free inspire action as you do so. So I have five attacks, my clash is three, but I am inspired, so I'll be hitting you on four or less. Here we go. Okay, so he did pretty good. He hit four times, cleave two. So, so instead of saving on a four or less, we'll save on a two or less. Minus two to my save. All right, so four dice. Let's see if these guys can save their butts. Lock shields! I save one. Uh-oh. Three wounds go through. So that's quite a few. Now you have to take some morale tests for those. Yes. Normally your resolve is two or less, but because you have a officer with you, he's got a resolve of three. Fail or pass? Oh, I passed two and failed one. Failed one. So that means an additional wound. So now I've taken a total of four wounds, which means two whole guys have died. So you have two casualty tokens oh, there to no. suck, satisfy. And then, so I'm actually gonna choose the ones that make it so that those house carls are a little bit harder to attack me. Oh, so I'm gonna choose this guy over here and this guy over here. Look at that. So that'll make it a little bit harder when they wanna come around and try to fight me. Very true, it's gonna be a much, much longer charge. Well, that was awesome. The blood no, was down two men at arms. No, it wasn't. <laughs> this is who I would be. If I was That's able Tycho to be right run there? around, this is Tycho the Barbarian. I would probably be this guy. He probably, he has your haircut. He does kind of have my haircut. <laughs> so you now went, now I go, I've got two cards left. First one is the Men at Arms. Men at Arms. Now, I would love to be able to charge those raiders to prevent them from go getting in here. So what I'm gonna do is declare a march action and then charge to make it a pretty much a give me charge. What that'll do is lock up these raiders so they can't charge my unit. So I'm gonna move forward with them. There's your five inches for your leader. And then they're gonna charge. Actually, do your leader first. That's, that's the leader, there you go. And then they're gonna charge. 
I got a three. But fortunately, that is enough. You are definitely in. With me, soldiers! With me, men at arms! Men at arms! They will all go with the leader. Your turn, sir. My turn is the House Carls! Oh, those House oh. Carls back there. So you made a good move in taking off casualties that were easy pickings for House Carl charges. I've got to go quite a ways if I'm going to make it into combat. I think what I'm gonna do is declare a march action and then charge at your pikemen in the back to make sure that they can't actually form up and take on the defensive stance you were hoping to do. And now they're gonna charge over here. <laughs> then it's really obvious. A one, is that oh, in? I rolled a one, that's definitely not in. That is a fail. They're just stuck there, they're yelling menacingly. Arr! Smelly host girls say what? What? All right, so I've got one last activation for this round. Okay. And it is the household guard. These uh -huh. guys left behind here. Right. I'm going to attempt something brave and bold and perhaps a little foolish. Ooh. I'm gonna attempt a very long charge into those guys. So let's see if it happens. Five or six, I get in there and start doing some damage because I'm not declaring a march and then a charge. I'm just declaring a charge straight out in the hopes that my second action can be a clash. So here we go. It's oh, a four! that's so super close. So my other action will be to march forward and I'll just march up the five inches to try to support for the next round. All right. Things are getting into position. The lines are forming. Your pikes have been protected by your shield walls. Oh, you still have more to I go. I do, I do. This round is not over. All right. So I have these raiders here, which uh, are nice and close. I think they're going to declare a charge on both of your men-at-arms units. Oh, you can multi-charge. I'm going to multi-charge. Raiders, on the charge! Go, boys, go! Ooh. A one. A one. Luckily, they're really close. Yeah, they are pretty close. They should be able to get into both. Yes. This is starting to look like a proper scrum. I have a leader and a raider fighting this unit of men-at-arms who do not have locked shields. No. Uh, that is only charged. one hit. Only one hit. Go flurry, go. Are you rolling my misses? Oh, two look at that. Hits. Another hit for two hits. And I try to save it on a three or less, and I don't save oh, no. either. Oh, neither of which them. Means two wounds, which means I gotta take my resolve test right now, and one more wound. So I've taken three wounds in total, which will mean a guy and a wound on another guy. One casualty token goes down at well. Four raiders into your other unit with locked shields. Well, the leader's already fought. One miss. Ooh, look at that. They all hit. Four hits. Fortunately, now I get a four or less, which I only succeed on two of them. Oh, no. Two of them go through. Let's see if the resolve. I have one more failure. So that is a total of three wounds for them as well. Oh, my word. Oh, there's so much death and destruction. Ah. It goes to me, however, I have no cards left. You've exhausted your command yeah. stack, which means I just get to keep drawing until keep I'm going. done. But I've only got one card left. And guess what it is? My Fenir Beast Pack. The beast is finally in, and I'm terrified. Where is that thing gonna come in? I have to stay within my reinforcement area. So that is 12 inches up the side of the map or anywhere along the side. I think my beast is gonna go into the far side. So you wanna go on the far end to try to take my home objective. So I'm guessing that thing is fairly fast. That is only one march action. But because he is feral. So you're gonna do a result test, see if you pass to be able to act normally. You so fail. I failed, so I'm all ferocious. Ferocious. Feral. But there's nobody within charge range. So I have to march directly towards the closest enemy unit that I can see. Well, that looks really terrifying for my crossbone in the back. We go on to the victory phase. We count up points. Yes. You have not taken the one in the back. I, I still hold not. it. You um, haven't taken this one yet. You're really have I? close. You're really close. The one on the center, though, is hotly contested. Hotly contested. So let's count up the miniatures in there. Okay. I have five models from my five. household guard. And those are medium models, so every one of them counts as a full model. Plus my men at arms, which count as double because of the special rule I gave them. So they're mediums, command ability on them, they count as double for eight. 13 models within six inches of that objective. I've got four house cars, six raiders. Blooded looks like he is just out. So six raiders are light troops. They only count as a total of three, because they only count as half each. Yeah. And then my house carls, of which I had four within range, count as four. So I have a total of seven 
which is nowhere near your 13. Which means I hold the objective, get the two points, and tie up the game. Tied game. Heading into round three. Wow, this is a close game. I'm loving how it's turning out. It's turning into a real melee. If I can shore up this flank, I can roll you up. And my blooded is doing real work, hacking through your unit as he goes. Your measured approach in this fighting line is not exactly what I expected from you, Nick, but it really shows off that the fighting style of the Hundred Kingdoms has a bit more to it. You pushed my models off that center objective really easily with your orders there. Order in the face of chaos. And stand your ground and hold the lines. So by now, you should have a handle on the rhythm of the game and how to navigate the different phases. The basics of moving and fighting are fairly straightforward, but the pre-planned command and thematic special rules leave space for big plays, subtle maneuvers, and opportunities to gain an edge over your foes. Catch it's kind of fun. I love the style of the, of the yeah. Nords, where they can sacrifice their men. It does kind of seem like you. Throw themselves forward. Vicious. It's barbaric. Barbaric. In the Get best of ways. You know what? It really shows off that the two factions play very differently. Right. Factions have their own flavors and intricacies and, and styles of play. I'm actually really interested to see how the other uh, factions oh, yeah. start fitting into this. Because there's going to be special rules and, and intricacies to every one of the factions. The Spires, the Wadroon. Oh yeah, I got to get the Wadroon. The dinosaurs in there? That'll be a lot oh, fun. the Raptor Riders and yeah. T-Rexes. I'm really excited to see how some of the other armies show off their style and flavor. The army builder is calling my name. Ooh. <laughs> Can you make me a really cool uh, Raptor Rider list? Oh yes. Every part of First Blood 2.0 feels like it's crafted for gamers like you. Like you. Like, like but, you. but not you. Actually, you know what? Okay, you know, you, you can get, you can come, you can come. Join the fun and get 10% off by using the affiliate link in the description below. The hard part will be choosing. So, which will you choose? The growing community of First Blood Gamers is wholeheartedly supported by Parabellum Games through updates, campaigns, grow leagues, and awesome new releases of their signature excellent models. First Blood Fever starts now. 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 No, sorry, now. Then? Actually, sorry, no. Now. now. Play on. Play on. Well, let's play on, we will play on and play on forever. Play on. Look, I have dice. Yeah. I got a four. I lost. I win. Victory for the Hunter Kingdoms. Suddenly they have robots. I don't know what I'm doing. Run away!